Hello everyone, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Oh boy, I am I am excited about this one, also a bit nervous. Before we jump into today's topic, which is going to be discussing whether or not I think it is still worth it to pursue art professionally, specifically as an online artist. We'll define online artist very soon, just to explain what I'm drawing today. This is just a small portrait sketch in a sketchbook. The sketchbook is from Sketchbook Co. Shop. I will leave a link down in the description to that shop if you'd like to check it out. They're beautiful. And I am drawing Dragon Age fan art. This is Fenris from Dragon Age 2. And I will be painting him with my Himimiya gouache set. So in defining the term online artist, of course, it's an artist who shares their work online. That is a pretty vague definition, and it is that way for a reason, because being an artist online can look different for everyone. For me, I have a YouTube channel, Patreon, Skillshare, Instagram, I have an online shop, and I also, as far as income goes, I utilize affiliate links. So I put links in the description that are sometimes uh, affiliate, and then I make a little bit of income. So those are my sources of income but that will look different for everybody. Some artists will also submit to galleries or partner with larger companies, and that's not even factoring in illustrators who are potentially freelance illustrators or who are hired by clients, and it, it, it can just look like so many different things. We need artists for lots of things. So I'm going to be kind of honing in on my own personal experiences and honing in on my own sort of category. So I will be sharing things that have changed for me over the years, and I have seen those similar changes happening for other artists who work in a similar field and with the same sorts of tools that I do. I've always tried to be pretty open about building the career that I have. I've made videos in the past about what my job looks like, what my studio looks like. I made a video a few years ago about how much money I make. I've always wanted to share this information with people because I think it's really important and there are a lot of people who want to share their creativity and their art with more people and would love to be able to support themselves on that. So I'm hoping that this video is not necessarily just like controversy and talking about um, AI and how art has changed, but really just an update to videos I've made in the past. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm sure lots of you have noticed and I've received lots of really lovely messages about having been gone for so long and all of this that I'm going to talk about today does tie into that. People have said, oh, I feel like you're not really connecting with your artistic process anymore or you're not really enjoying making art anymore. And those are astute and accurate observations. I definitely had reached a point where I just wasn't feeling fulfilled in the art that I was making. A lot of artists, myself included, have seen this growing pressure to create more content, which means creating less art, and to just make as much as we can as far as like making videos and making, whether it's TikToks or Reels or YouTube shorts or just YouTube videos in general, we've been feeling a lot of pressure to create as much as we can. And the financial return and the reach that we have has been greatly diminished. One of the things that's just been slowly crushing my soul is the fact that my income dropped by 50% in 2022. So if you look at the money I made in 2021 and the money I made in 2022, I made half as much last year. That's due to a lot of factors. But when you combine the factors outside of my control, places where I'm making less money and there's not really much I can do about it, and you pair that with the internet's incessant push to make more, to constantly be present, to not let people forget about you online. So we have to constantly be posting, and it's not enough to just post our art anymore. We're also supposed to be video editors. We have to learn how to make reels or how to make TikToks because our images, our art alone, is not enough anymore. So an artist who wants to do a job similar to what I do 
you can't just make art anymore, which has kind of always been the case when you're working online, you know, like if you want to be an online artist, it's good to know how to run your website and how to manage your social media presence. But we're adding on top of that now that we have to follow trends. We have to be massively consuming media on the internet to know what kinds of videos we should make. I actually have been running into lately that Instagram is just straight up telling me, hey, here are some clips of yours that you've shared in your story. We've already edited them together for you. All you have to do is post it. And it really is this weird, surreal, dystopian feeling where it's like, wow, Instagram, like you're not, you don't even want me to be creative. You just want more content. You just, you took the things I already made and you said, all you have to do is hit the share button. And what it does is it makes me feel like I'm not the target audience for videos. I'm the product and the internet just wants more products to show to advertisers because that's where these platforms make their money. So really they're prioritizing advertisers. So the more videos there are, the more ads you can show. And the more videos there are, the longer people will stay on your platforms to see more ads. And feeling the weight of that constantly, regularly, daily is absolutely soul crushing. And listen, you may be hearing me voice my frustrations or my criticisms and think that I sound like a whiny baby. And that's true. I'm an artist. This is where the whiny babies go. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense at all. Art is an incredibly emotional process. And the people who pour themselves into making art and want to build it and share it and create something special, we tend to wear our heart on our sleeves a lot. And I'm done apologizing for that. Yes, I am extremely emotional. My emotions matter, and I'm done thinking that being productive and making a lot of money and serving capitalism is the only way for me to be successful and fulfilled as a human. Learning about my emotions and cultivating my emotional health brings me purpose in life. I'm not going to apologize for that anymore, and if you're like me, you shouldn't have to apologize for it either. I say, I say that because I want to clear some misconceptions. A lot of people don't take art or content creation seriously as a source of income. So when we voice our concerns or frustrations, we just sound like the lazy hitchhikers of society who aren't doing real work and therefore should be happy for any money or exposure we get because in the back of their minds, they don't actually think that we deserve it. And honestly, it's just sad that capitalism has wrecked us so badly that the way someone earns their livelihood isn't valid unless they sell their soul to a company for a contractually obligated number of hours every day. Art is the language we can all speak no matter where we're from. We need that to be human. And I get that it's tricky because this frontier of me being able to talk about these sorts of things and sit in my sketchbook, make art, and to be able to live off of that is a relatively new frontier. It really is. And it takes so long for like society and lawmaking to change. So the way that Skillshare, for example, I started posting classes on Skillshare for the last five years. It has been my largest source of income in the past. And when I got into it, the platform was relatively new. And speaking as far as like big world spanning businesses go, it is still very new. And the way that Skillshare pays its teachers has changed a lot over time. There are so many teachers, myself included, who are making two to three to four thousand dollars a month on Skillshare being teachers. That entails making a class, which is a huge, massive undertaking, and also being present on the platform to respond to projects, give critiques, and to post fun challenges for your audience. So that alone can very easily be a full-time job. And there are artists who were making multiple thousands of dollars a month on the platform this time last year, who are now making six, seven hundred dollars a month on the platform, and that's just pretty crushing. Yes, the internet changes. Yes, things change. Things that worked a few years ago don't have to work today. But the problem and the reason why it's hurting so many creatives is that it is changing, but it's not changing for the better. It's just changing for create more and earn less. And really, it very often feels like there's nothing we can do about it. 
Of course, we are the people, we are the world, we have a lot of power, but when you're working online, you feel very alone. I don't have co-workers that I see every day, I, don't, I have no water cooler chats, so I can sometimes be fooled by the illusion that I am alone. But the truth is, there are a lot of us, and we're all constantly, daily, working alongside each other, and there are a lot of systems in place on the internet that, just, that make us feel like we're rivals, and we're competing for views or we're competing for shop sales because we're all kind of pulling from similar audiences, but I'm working really hard to remind myself that my fellow artists are my friends and my coworkers. And that's been one of the most beautiful things, not one of the best thing about the job that I do, is that I have made so many friends and I've gotten to know people that I never would have had the opportunity to know otherwise. In terms of feeling alone and lost and hopeless, that's something that I have definitely felt and I find myself regularly thinking about the fact that I, as an artist, am not really anybody's employee. And you think, oh, well of course that makes sense, you're self-employed, you're not anyone's employee. The problem is I'm no one's employee but I work for a lot of people. So the self-employment is almost a little bit of an illusion because if I want to do well on platforms like YouTube and Instagram, for example, I have to be constantly regularly making content. YouTube and Instagram has employees, I'm not one of them. This means that those companies have no obligation to take care of me. And that may sound strange to say, but let me explain. I don't have anyone who is liable to provide a safe working environment for me, meaning that YouTube doesn't care if I work 100 hours a week. Instagram doesn't care and is not responsible if I get injured or hurt in some way while doing my job, things that a more conventional employer would be responsible for. So they can push and ask and encourage and manipulate me and other creatives and just consumers at large as much as they want. And I say these things not necessarily to complain, but just to provide some perspective on the things that have been weighing on me so much over the last couple of years, maybe, that it's made it very difficult then to connect with my creativity and to want to create art. And I know that I'm not just speaking for myself. I've been chatting with a few of my art friends who have all expressed similar sentiments. To touch a little bit on my thoughts about AI generated images and AI quote unquote art, take a look at this tweet with me. Imagine if every book is converted into an animated book and made 10 times more engaging. AI will do this. Huge opportunity here to disrupt Kindle and Audible. Responded to by John Epler, who is the creative director for Dragon Age Dreadwolf. The idea that books need to be made more engaging is the entire broken worldview of the AI tech bro made manifest. This pretty much sums it up. A lot of people ask the question, is AI progress? Is this the next step in human industrialization? Yeah, we've been automating for a long time. Carpenters lost their jobs when we started mass producing tables and chairs. Textile workers like weavers and knitters and crocheters, all of those beautiful time consuming tasks became way more likely to be viewed as hobbies when we started mass producing clothing and bedding and all kinds of other fabrics. Automation is a thing that we are doing, but, 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 there is something absurdly and dangerously dehumanizing about automating artwork. I understand how this could be useful from like a graphic design or creative idea or even a concept art standpoint. I understand how having these tools could be really useful, specifically within the lens of capitalism and making money, because you can eliminate some of those like entry level concept artist jobs. I get where it's coming from. But oh boy, is it just so, so, so bad and so damaging to our humanity. And really, that's the biggest lesson that I've been learning while I've been away. And really the lesson that I need to continue to internalize to continue to exist as a human. And I want to keep doing what I'm doing here with you. I want to keep sharing things and creating things. But as long as we societally continue to prioritize making as much money as possible, the choking out of creatives will only continue. So for me, I've had to take some time to learn what actually gives value and purpose to my life. And when I think about what crushes me, 
and what invigorates me, being productive and making as much money as possible does not give purpose to my life. But hearing your stories, connecting with other people, and learning to be more fluent in a language that everyone can speak, that's what brings me joy, and that's what gives life meaning, and that's what I'm going to keep chasing after. So, do I recommend pursuing art? Absolutely. There are so many amazing resources out there for learning skills, finding inspiration and encouragement, and picking supplies that are right for you. Do I recommend pursuing art professionally? That's harder to answer. Yes, someone attempting to support themselves independently as an artist can find money to be made, but the path is so riddled with manipulation and commitment to the never-ending abuse of the grind, which is now 24-7 instead of 9-5 to because of the internet, that I can't in good conscience encourage people to commit themselves to this. Saying that is accompanied with the same pain I feel when I encourage my kids about their own future. I want to tell them to enjoy the things they enjoy and give them a sense of hope and joy and security for their futures. That is becoming harder and harder to do as the world continues to change. What I have learned is that relationships are the greatest things we have. My children, my partner, and my friends make the struggles worth fighting through. I want to tell you to follow your art passions and build an online presence that is unique to you. I want to say that will work. I can't confidently say that in 2023. I can, however, encourage you to discover yourself, love yourself, and surround yourself with people who want to love you and be loved by you. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I've recently revamped my Patreon. If you would like to check it out and support the work that I'm doing here, it would mean a lot to me. And thank you so much to the patrons who have stuck around or come back while, while I've been going on this journey and going through all kinds of things. There really isn't enough time to talk about it all in 20 minutes. But hopefully we'll have lots more time together in the future and we'll just keep living alongside each other, supporting each other, and that's what really matters. All right, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.